Narcissists are deeply entitled people. They can't stand anyone saying no to them or making them wait or denying or limiting their access to something. So how on earth can you set a boundary with such people without incurring their wrath? In this video, I'm going to share with you three ways that you can set a boundary without triggering their rage. Now first, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Shanine Megji. I'm a transition coach. Welcome to my YouTube channel called Toxicity is Not Your Destiny. My mission is to help people navigate toxic relationships and environments in their lives from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you like this video, take a moment right now and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell so that you can get alerts every single time I upload a video because every week I'm going to be bringing you a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships and environments in your life. So without further ado, let's dive into the subject. How do you set a boundary with a narcissist without incurring their wrath? Well, the simple answer would be don't get into a relationship with such a person in the first place because these are not two-way relationships, but one-way relationships at your expense. But of course, that is easier said than done. We can't always avoid narcissists. They seem to be everywhere. And the Bible tells us about how in the end times, more and more people in the world are going to have narcissistic traits. And that verse is found in 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5. There's more than one verse. So maybe the narcissist in your life is a family member, a partner, a spouse, a boss, a leader, and you're not quite in the position to exit the relationship. It may be too complicated or leaving may not be the answer right now. So how can you manage setting boundaries with this high conflict personality? Well, the premise for setting boundaries with a narcissist is this. You have to work with how the narcissist is wired. So you will have to change your thinking, your approach, and how you frame things every time you want to set a boundary. And I'm going to share with you in this video how to do that. Now, first, I want to preamble by saying that the tactics I'm about to share are specifically crafted to deal with a special breed of a person, a narcissist, a predator, a wolf in sheep's clothing type of a person, someone who is deeply entitled, who's selfish, unempathetic, high conflict, someone who cannot stand boundaries. So these tactics are not meant to be used in your regular relationships with other people because to use them in those relationships where there is a give and take and trust, uh, that would be to engage in manipulation. And this video is not about teaching you how to manipulate people to get what you want. You don't want to turn into a narcissist yourself. But these tactics are useful and they're effective to work with the wiring of a narcissist in setting boundaries instead of relating to the narcissist out of your own wiring. It's essentially to beat the narcissist at their own game so that you can get what you need and what you have the right to while keeping the narcissistic's narcissist rage and their abuse at bay. So I hope that makes sense. The tips I'm about to share are intended to give you space and protection when you are in a turbulent, volatile environment with a destructive person. So without further ado, let's continue. I'm going to start by telling you a story about a woman in the Bible who set a boundary with a narcissist and it backfired on her. It's the story of Queen Vashti and King Xerxes in the Bible in the book of Esther. I will paraphrase the story here, but you can go ahead and read it in Esther chapter 1. King Xerxes and Queen Vashti were a royal couple. The story begins with King Xerxes holding a seven-day banquet for all the people from the least to the greatest in his city. It was a royally decadent, abundant banquet with not one lavish thing spared. 
In fact, the guests were allowed to drink as much wine as they wanted. There was no limit or restriction to how much they could drink for seven days, imagine. And now it says that on the seventh day of the banquet, the king was in such high spirits, he wanted his eunuchs to bring him his wife Vashti for all the guests and all the nobles to look at because she was so beautiful. But when the attendants asked Queen Vashti to come on behalf of the king, she flatly refused. So the king became enraged at her and he was so upset, he consulted with his officials, he asked them for advice and they took this opportunity to tell him that it was completely inappropriate for her to do this and now all the wives and all the households are going to start treating their husbands in this disrespectful way. So the king ought to banish her from his presence forever and appoint someone else to be the queen. So the king listened and he took their advice and overnight Queen Vashti was banished and we have no clue how Queen Vashti took the news. but. In any case, I think Queen Vashti suffered a pretty harsh consequence for her trespass. We have no idea why she refused to come. Maybe she didn't want to demean herself in front of a bunch of drunk men, or maybe she was ill. We, we don't know. But the king was obviously more concerned about showing her off like some trophy than respecting her wishes or her dignity. So one thing that is common among all narcissists is that if you cross them in any way, their rage is over the top. It is completely disproportionate to the offense that was committed against them. So sadly, Vashti was powerless in the situation. The king had all the power and the complete upper hand over her. So she set the boundary and she got kicked out of her position. So her treatment doesn't seem fair, but that is the truth of what happened to her and the Bible is amazing for telling stories as they are. So this story begs the question, if Vashti still wanted to remain queen and not be disgraced in front of a group of drunk men, could she have handled the situation more shrewdly and strategically, knowing that she was dealing with a narcissist husband? And I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking some of you watching are in a difficult relationship with a narcissist and being too out there and too direct in setting a boundary with that narcissist like Vashti could get you into some serious trouble and you might not be able to afford that right now. The narcissist in your life may have too much of the upper hand and it may not be safe for you to be so direct in setting a boundary. So what can you do? I'm going to talk about three ways of what you can do and I also want to recommend that you watch a video I created on how to gain power over the narcissist and you watch that while also watching this video. So here is the first way you can set a boundary with a narcissist. Number one, reframe the boundary and do it in a way that points out the benefit that the narcissist gets from you having that boundary. When you set the boundary, you're actually going to make it so that the narcissist is getting served in the process and gaining somehow from you taking or not taking a certain action. In this way, the narcissist is not able to tell that you're setting a boundary because you're putting the focus on meeting their need or their agenda in some way. So you may have to think a bit deeply about this and find a real genuine benefit for the narcissist. I'm not saying to make up something, but actually find something authentic. And I'm convinced you will find something, even if it sounds like something superficial. A narcissist will always hear your boundary better when you present it with a benefit to them, even if it sounds a bit lame, than to flat out refuse them and suffer their rage. One thing to remember is that narcissists view people as either all good or all bad, which is called splitting. So they're unable to integrate people as whole beings with a mix of good, bad, and ugly traits. So when you set a boundary with a narcissist, they will inevitably automatically view you as all bad as a villain. So if you were highly elevated in their eyes and they had you on this pedestal, you will drop down many, many notches in their eyes and become their punching bag. 
So frame a boundary in a positive way where it shows that you are looking out for their interests and that prevents them from seeing you as all bad. For example, let's look at Queen Vashti's situation. When the king asked her to appear, well, she just flatly refused. What if she had framed her boundary in a different light? What if she had approached the king privately and said, Honey, can I have a private moment with you? I am so flattered that you think I'm so beautiful and you want to show me off in front of all of your guests, but I want to reserve all my beauty just for you and your eyes only. You are the king. You should get to have all my beauty all to yourself and not have to show me off to anyone, not even your guests. Your guests are going to have so much more respect and honor for you because of you reserving me only for yourself. Do you think King Xerxes would have banished her from his presence with that response? Probably not. A narcissist is always preoccupied with their own needs, their own agenda, their own image. So I'm sure if Vashti had framed her boundary in a way that was serving to meet his need or elevate his image, he would not have seen her request as a boundary. He probably would have been so thankful that she set that boundary because now he's going to get even more honor from it, which is the narcissistic supply that he craves so much. And so it's all about reframing. The second way to set a boundary with a narcissist also has to do with reframing, but instead of highlighting the benefit that the narcissist is going to get from that boundary, frame the boundary in a way that points out a negative consequence that the narcissist will suffer or experience if he doesn't support the boundary. So let's go back to the story of Queen Vashti. Perhaps she could have approached the king and said, I'm flattered you think I'm beautiful and you want me to go out in front of your guests. But if you do that, you are wasting a precious opportunity and you're going to diminish your credibility in front of all the guests. Your guests are drunk and they're not in a sober frame of mind to appreciate the beautiful queen you have chosen for yourself and wanting to display. You don't want to cast your pearls to swine, do you? I think if Vashti had presented her boundary like that, King Xerxes would not likely have noticed she was setting a boundary, but that she was actually thinking more about his interests and he would have been so grateful to have a wife that is averting a dishonoring situation for him. Because remember, for a narcissist, their unconscious quest is for narcissistic supply. They're always looking for more admiration, more honor, more recognition, more self-importance, and so because the boundary was framed in that way, the king would never have seen her comment as a boundary. Now let's say reframing doesn't work. The third way you can set a boundary is to say no, but mitigate it with an empathetic response and an alternative offer. By declining this way, at least you are demonstrating a commitment to the narcissist's interests and it doesn't turn you into an enemy in their eyes. So back to Queen Vashti's story. A mitigating response might have looked like, honey, I'm flattered you think I'm so beautiful and you want to show me off to your guests. I'm just not feeling well. In fact, I'm feeling so nauseous because I'm not used to drinking so much wine and drinking so much variety of wine. The amazing wine you put out. But there's a servant girl who knows how to play the harp so beautifully and I think it may be just the thing for our guests since the crowd has gotten so drunk and rowdy. This could be the perfect solution to wind down the party and bring the even evening to a close and everyone will love you for it. Would the king have gotten furious and enraged with that response? Perhaps not because even in the mitigating response, it's framed in a way that shows a commitment to the needs, interests, and the agenda of the narcissistic king. Proverbs 15.1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So in a way, boundary setting with a narcissist has a lot to do with the spirit in which you deliver the boundary. And most definitely, a gentle answer goes a long way with any human being that you deal with. Where a narcissist is concerned though, if you do have a gentle, empathetic tone 
and there is something in your answer that is supportive of the narcissist agenda, whether they will gain a benefit from you having the boundary or they might experience a negative consequence if it's not heated or some other consolation attempt to help the narcissist, then all these things can prevent the narcissist from splitting and viewing you as the villain in their world and thereby punishing you with their abuse. It could also result in you getting the boundary you needed, plus still having favor with the narcissist and the narcissist being thankful that you are also looking out for their interests. It could be a big win-win situation for you and maybe keep you more often on the side of favor with the narcissist as opposed to being in the doghouse. So I just shared with you three different ways that you can set a boundary with a narcissist without triggering their rage. And I just want to reiterate again that these are not tactics to use in everyday relationships with other people where there is give and take, there is trust in the relationship, but they're especially for a narcissist breed type of a person, a wolf in sheep's clothing type of a person, someone who cannot stand hearing no or receiving boundaries and they are very destructive in their words and their actions. So these tactics are really ways to help you navigate in a toxic environment with a destructive person uh, so that you can have some breathing room and some peace in the relationship. So I just shared with you my insights on how to set a boundary with a narcissist without triggering their rage. I hope they were helpful. If you know someone who is in a relationship with a narcissist or a destructive, abusive person, share this video with them so that they can benefit from the tips I share in this video. If you are thinking of leaving or have left a toxic environment and you're in a season of transition, or maybe you left a normal environment, check out a free training I have put together. It's all about three key ways to navigate a transition. These are things that brought a massive breakthrough in my life when I was going through a difficult transition. I have included the link in the description box below. If you would like to see more content from me and you have not subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button and click on the bell because every single week I'm going to be bringing you a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships and environments. And if you like the video, please also give it a like. This helps me to know what kind of content to produce, what kind of content you like. And if you have other suggestions of topics you would like me to cover, please feel free to drop your ideas in the comments section. Thank you so much. And this brings me to the end of my video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.